Hello everyone, here at Lenaro Connect in Budapest. Uh, I'm here with uh, Robert Wolf, here with Yang Zhang, Director of 96 Boards and the Technical Lead of 96 Boards, Amit Kucheria. Uh, we're here to just kind of talk to you a little bit about 96 Boards. Yeah. So, so you're just about to go to a session, right? Where, I am, yes. And uh, so it's a very busy time. It is super busy, yes. We have a lot of activity going on. So uh, what kind of roles do you have? So I'm tec technical lead, uh, which means that I'm in charge of uh, uh, working with the partners to get the boards to market, uh, including compliance and uh, in charge of the specification and make sure that the boards comply with the specification. And do you talk with all the, the chip makers, uh, encourage them to make uh, super cool 96 boards? Yeah, I mean, that's right. So we're very happy to see the adoptions and, and the support from across the industry all the SOC vendors have, and they're all very keen and uh, to a large extent most of the Linaro's existing members and uh, to all, uh, you know, hopefully pr the future members are keen to enable the SOC on various form f factor of 96 volts. All right, that's cool. So what are we going to talk about here? So I thought that, you know, we'd lay out a bunch of these 96 boards from different specifications, kind of point out some of the differences, possibly walking through the evolution of 96 boards, the specification itself, and then talk about how 96 boards is kind of tackling some of its community efforts throughout this year, 2017. So um, as you can see here on the table, um, kind of a, a plethora of, of sizes and shapes. Uh, we have uh, consumer edition boards right around here. Uh, you can see standard versions and expanded or extended. Uh, we have some IoT boards over here. Uh, some new ones that were actually just announced in the keynote yesterday. And then we have some mezzanine products down here as well. Uh, behind here are a little bit of uh, some 3D printed cases, just kind of showing that the ecosystem is growing, some interesting things that, that the community is pushing out uh, you know, throughout last year. And you've been talking about this in the open hours? Yes, yes, and so yeah, we've mentioned open hours several times, and um, we will be doing a live show here in Budapest, but uh, we also do a live broadcast every single week on Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Very good opportunity. It's kind of what I like to call uh, the community's channel to get in touch with developers and anyone else around the world that, that you know, wants to drive this effort forward. You've had 42 episodes, right? 42 episodes it's so like far. It's minimum one hour long of each or how? So it's, a, it's actually very fun. It's, non -for, it's not formal at all. We just kind of sit there, everyone pours a cup of coffee, we talk tech, um, gets into open source, Lenaro stuff, uh, ARM. Uh, there's debates. Fun, fun times, and then mostly what it ends up happening is, is we just end up kind of answering questions and, and viewing how we want to kind of approach the, the advancement of 96 and boards. And it's mostly about 96 boards, all those episodes, open hours about 96 boards? Mostly, yes, yes. Right. But like I said, you know, sometimes we just kind of kick back and have fun. People share their hacks and share yeah. their problems as well. So, so yeah. um, uh, what's been the, the um, response and the use so far and where is it going with all these 96 boards? So, if, uh, I mean, we started the first board, yeah. the first board uh, yeah. was uh, the high key that was announced roughly about two years ago, uh, right which is right there, the high key. Looks like the circuit board. code one right here and then the... Oh yeah, so that's the original yeah. version and yeah. then the, the, we moved to a different vendor and so that's the high key. This was roughly two years ago and you've seen that in two years we've evolved to uh, a plethora of SOC vendors, uh, different form factors, so that's that's an upcoming board from uh, Qualcomm based on their 820C uh, This is chip. bigger. Yes, this so this is bigger because the specification allows for you an extended uh, version of the specification where you can have uh, Ethernet uh, port on there and maybe other connectors that you might want to expose on there. So. Um, the original specification, if you see, if you see this, this is compatible up to here. So your mezzanines and your low-speed expansion connector and your high-speed expansion connectors are still in the same place, but it allows you more space to add on more connectors and expose more features of your SOC. So this is a, there's is there SATA? No SATA. Uh, uh, so this one's called PCIe though. PCIe. Yeah. And uh, this Ethernet and. Uh, 
uh, headphone jack. Yeah, there's a headphone jack in there. And, uh... So a lot of times what you end up with is, is uh, I mean, for instance, like we could compare the, the Dragon Board 410C with the 820. And on the 410C, it's basically saying, okay, well, you know, 410 has these particular features. You can break out these particular aspects of the SOC. But with other chips, such as the 820, which is a much newer chip, there are a lot more things that, that they felt was, it was capable of, right? So they, they tackled the extended version of the, of the specification where, uh, where they were able to break out more things. There right? was also developer demand for, let's say, an Ethernet port on there. And uh, it was very hard to fit that into the original version of the specification. So people, people are experimenting with that extended version there. And uh, um, the 820 is going to be enable lots of powerful things, right? Oh yeah, that's going to be a powerful board. chip. It's, it's going to be a very important I, I, one, right? So the 820 is in some of the flagship uh, phone mo uh, phone models of this year. So it's 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 a very recent chip, and uh, it's it's a very powerful chip. And uh, that's the that's the thing. ARM in general has been designed over the last decades optimized kind of for our phones. And yes. so that's the one you have to take. You have to take the latest phone processor and do all kinds of development so, so around the it. C, so the CE uh, family of uh, chips, it's primarily uh, mobile chips. So everything on here was basically designed for mobile phones and they're trying to get that into a developer form factor on these boards. Uh, the IE form factor, so these are the MCUs, the microcontrollers, that's the Cortex M series. And uh, there's a there's a lot, lot more vendors uh, in, in this market. So what are we looking at here, for example? Um, so the first one here was, yep. was a carbon board. Uh, yep. we, we, we designed this. Um, it's got an STM32, so ST Microelectronics uh, 32 and uh, F4 uh, series of uh, microcontroller. It's also got a Nordic uh, NRF51 as a Bluetooth LE uh, uh, transport. So yeah, if, if you'd recall, this one was actually announced in Last Connect, yeah. uh, September of last year. Uh, it did its showcase, and then uh, some of our engineers did a really cool demo on stage uh, during the keynote. So what's the idea with the, this, those, uh, you call it IoT boards? Or? Yeah. So what's the idea of, is there a so the spec IoT, here? So the IoT spec also has, has two versions of the specification, yeah. uh, one of them being um, your, your basic um, um, uh, IoT sensor boards. So it's basically where you, you plug in uh, your sensors and you uh, relay data back to the cloud. And, and then there's the gateway uh, version of the spec. That could be more of the Cortex-A uh, series of processors on there. And uh, that would be your relay to the cloud. So uh, the Carbon, for example, is, is a version of the IE spec where you just connect uh, sensors on there. And it's, it has BLE uh, transport uh, back to your gateway. Um, they were showing at the keynote, they were showing, um, what do you call it, Zephyr? Zephyr. Zephyr. And this runs on there? Yes. So these these boards, I mean, the, the SOCs, uh, the microcontrollers on here, uh, these have kilobytes of memory and kilobytes of flash. So Linux cannot run. In its current form, Linux cannot run on these processors. And Zephyr is a new open source system? So Zephyr is, a, is an RTOS uh, that's currently being uh, um, managed by Linux Foundation. And uh, Linaro is now a member of the uh, Zephyr um, uh, steering committee. Um, and so we are working with Zephyr upstream to, to get Zephyr to the point where, so I, I, like, I like to call Zephyr the Linux of microcontrollers, in the sense that it, it, it should have the same sort of uh, uh, community, uh, the same so, sort of uh, meritocracy, if you may, um, that Linux does for development uh, of open source uh, uh, real-time operating systems on microcontrollers. So uh, uh, 96 board is quite popular, uh, 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 what's it called? platform, I mean, uh, community, there's lots of SOC vendors shipping or preparing. At the keynote, they were talking about 30 in development. So, yeah. so that's a big, there's a big future there. We actually wanted to talk about that a little bit. I mean, in the case of, of these boards that we actually have here, right? So you can see uh, the MediaTek X20. This was released not too long ago. Mm -hmm. And then as you saw in the keynote yesterday, uh, they already have the next board planned and released, right? So the SOC vendors are definitely seeing value add in, in creating 96 boards around their chips. So, uh, so they can easily update to X25 and X30 and they just 
put the chip in basically nearly. Yeah, so, so what, we, what we're seeing is that uh, initially the, the plans were just one board, maybe tr try out an experimental 96 board. Now people are announcing roadmaps of boards. Mm -hmm. So they want uh, 96 boards across a plethora of form factors and across a range of SOCs at different price points. So and that, would be, that would be MediaTek supporting 96 boards. It, it's part, partly MediaTek supporting here, right? Not just Archimind and... Uh, so, so both models work uh, uh, just fine. So in, in some cases, ODMs are saying that this is a very interesting form factor and we have an interesting SOC we want to put on there. And so they're, they're doing it. Arrow is doing some of that. And then in some cases, the SOC vendors are saying that we want, instead of doing our own developer board, which used to be like a few thousand dollars uh, uh, earlier. They want to try out this new form factor and, and work with the board vendor and uh, maybe share costs there. And, uh, but then there's a, there's a question about shipping boards and then support, having software support. Uh, so what's being done in making sure that the board has everything people would want to have? So it's actually very interesting. So another kind of aspect of the community growing and growing and, and very rapidly is that you're starting to see, you know, uh, folks over at Canonical wanting to put their operating systems on 96 boards. So, I mean, we didn't request this, we didn't ask for it, but now we have Ubuntu Core running on the Dragonboard 410C. Uh, they're already talking about adapting Ubuntu Core to other 96 boards, all right? So, uh, I mean, you're starting to see uh, all of these, these uh, I guess, uh, developers wanting to put their operating systems on, on these boards. So one of the reasons I think is that is the cost. I mean, getting these to under the hundred dollar price point for the mobile chips, and I'm guessing it's it's the twenty to thirty dollar price point for the IoT IoT boards. Uh, it's it's very easy and very cheap for people to experiment with it, and it's not a very expensive investment in trying to port something new to this board. Um, and and the fact that. Uh, people, uh, um, SOC vendors are putting their latest chips on, on this platform, on this vehicle. That, that makes it more attractive because now people have uh, uh, the latest uh, SOCs from, I mean, some of these, some of these uh, X20, I mean, this is shipping in current phones. The A20C is shipping in current phones. So these are not end of life SOCs. These are SOCs that are being shipped in mass volumes today and people are wanting to put that on developer boards. So that makes it very attractive. Yeah, I, I wanted to point out something else really cool, and we haven't really focused on these yet, but um, here in front we have a bunch of these mezzanine boards, and this isn't even half of them, right? But an interesting fact about these mezzanine boards is that, uh, for the most part, they're capable of essentially plugging on to any of these. If they're designed around the specification, then they should, in essence, uh, be capable of, of transporting and across. what kind of thing can they do? So that's another interesting fact about these. Uh, so essentially what you want to do is, uh, if you're designing a mezzanine board, you're breaking out a particular functionality that you're interested in. So um, in, the drag in the case of the Dragonboard 410C, we have an audio mezzanine right here. This was made by Aero, and uh, you can actually buy it right now on their site. This was designed to break out the analog expansion header as well as some other features that they felt that they wanted on the board, but most specifically the analog expansion header on the Dragonboard 410C. You also have this one, and this one I think is one of the most interesting ones so far. Um, there was some folks up in, I think it was San Jose or San Francisco, AI Star Vision is what they're calling themselves, and they're oh, the upside down, and they're calling this board the uh, AI Star Vision uh, MIPI adapter, right? They wanted a camera on their Dragonboard 410C. And so what they did is they went out and designed a mezzanine board just because they, they wanted that functionality. So they designed this and now they're selling it on eBay uh, at cost because they just want people uh, to take part in, in their efforts as well. And they just joined the 96 Sports community and, and went with it. So, so right now there's, a, for example, Android support for sure everywhere, but there's a, what kind of work are you doing to make sure that all these boards get instant software access so or super fast so not that, instant maybe so that that is uh, i think a lot of that uh, depends on the what the uh, goals of the members are um, in some cases they are happy with just android support because they they are targeting just that audience in other cases we are seeing that uh, vendors want uh, uh, multiple operating systems supported to, to cater to other types of uh, hobbyists. So, uh, for example, Qualcomm uh, has uh, Ubuntu, Debian, uh, Open Embedded, and even Windows uh, 10 Core running on their boards because they want to basically capture 
the entire market, regardless of what operating system uh, people choose to run. And they have free Duino, right? Sometimes uh, the the GPU uh, driver kind yes. of like are an issue, right? So that that's that's one of the unique points of uh, uh, of the Qualcomm chip. So it's actually got a uh, reverse engineered uh, open graphics driver. Um, and so people who, who, who want the entire stack open, entire software stack open, uh, sometimes prefer that because they are able to fix bugs a lot easier because they can look at the code. And yes. this, this is something that's required to be done through Linaro, right? Is, uh, uh, Linaro is all the ARM SSCs working on Linux and ARM, so uh, this, this is why this is being done. The 96 board project is hosted at Linaro. Yeah, so I mean, in, in essence, what we're looking at is it, when you do release a 96 board, there is a process that you have to go through, right? And uh, the ones you're looking at here, for the most part, have gone through that process, and we will stand by them, right? Uh, if we're looking, for instance, in the case, and this is in, in the uniqueness and, and, uh, and how boards stand out from one another, uh, we were just talking about the Dragon board and how they wanted to put all these operating systems on their board. Well, the Bubblegum, for instance, chose to adapt Android Remix, right? So Bubblegum is one of the only boards that I've seen run Android Remix on it. Um, then you have MediaTek, which um, is right now only running Android. However, in the future, they might want to run something else. So Remix, uh, this is the Actions CPU? Yeah, so this is with the Actions Semi uh, CPU. And, you know, by the way, you can find all of these boards on 96boards.org, right? So uh, also, hopefully, in the description of this video, we'll have a nice... Uh, a layout of links so, for you to visit. W one thing I'd like to point out though, that a lot of this is driven by the members, by the vendors themselves. We are only custodians of the specification. So we've, we've worked with the various vendors and, and tried to come up with a spec. It's not perfect, ne no spec ever is, but it's a, we only uh, look after the specification. People are putting in innovation. They are finding ways to extend the spec. Uh, beyond what was planned for, and that's perfect because that leads to uh, the evolution of the spec. I mean, one of the things that I'm going to be working on this year is collect more information on what the next version of the specification, call it a 1.1, call it a 2.0, what would that would look like? Because technology is evolving. I mean, we're going from uh, USB Type A connectors to where USB C and USB 3.0 is going to be universal. Maybe it's time to change those connectors out. And USB USB uh, C can be used for Ethernet and HDMI and DisplayPort and everything. Uh, so I was just talking to someone yesterday. I could get rid of all of this if I went to USB C because you could do display. I could do uh, uh, all your peripherals here. I could even do power. So I, I could oh, yeah. get rid of all of this with USB Type-C Just one or two or three connectors, exactly. depends. And, and, but now we have to work out the details. I mean, we have to work out uh, what has to be mandatory, what, uh, because there's still uh, peripherals out there that are Type-A. We don't want to force uh, uh, people to just upgrade everything because we changed all the connectors on there. So you can't force uh, uh, everybody to make open source uh, GPU drivers and, and support every type of Linux and everything, but if it gets super popular, it might encourage them to say, hey, we really definitely need to be uh, providing a very cool Ubuntu and every kind of Linux. I, I think that's, that's at some point vendors will start uh, realizing in, in terms of, I think it's about uh, consumers uh, voting with their wallets at that point on, on what they consider important. If, if, if uh, consumer consider um, open source graphics drivers important, they'll vote with their wallets. Oh, this, this year is going to be action-packed. I think we've got a very exciting lineup of boards. Um, I mean, some of this is public information. We've got people putting FPGAs on these boards um, that should be announced. I mean, once they go through the whole compliance process, um, they should go up on the website. But and for example, here, you're handing them out to all the engineers, and there should be just more, more of that, where everybody gets access to these and, so and the contributes. Last, so at the last Connect, we actually handed out 400 carbons to see what people would do with it. I mean. So every, every attendee got a carbon board.